Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode again of the Not To Talk About podcast. As you can see there's a smile on Tom's face and there'll soon be a smile on mine because we've finally won another football match and we can come back on here and talk about a win. But first things first, Tom, how are you bro? Mate, I'm, I'm delighted to be here again. I'm always happy to be here but obviously we can talk about a win so my mood is like 10 times better but yeah always happy to be on the pod um but yeah a win last night was uh, was incredible as we're going to talk about absolutely. absolutely i think there's no better place to start than just asking you about your 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 thoughts overall because obviously we'll dive into the individual parts of it afterwards but an overall review from you would be absolutely perfect yeah mate i, I want to start by saying you know uh i get the not negativity but the the dampener on it out of the way first you know let's not get too high with the highs and too low with the lows obviously we've been here before with the Newport win we all thought this is it we're going to go on a run now and I have seen a lot of comments saying um, you know we're six points off the playoffs now and look don't get it wrong um, I would love nothing more than sneaking those playoffs and uh, I would I mean even though it was bad for my health last year Wembley it was the best experience ever so if we can do it again do not get it wrong I would love it but at the same time, call me crazy. Uh, in a weird way, it's probably better if we don't go up in the long term. In terms of, I, I think wrong. I want us to, but if we look at it, like we we all agree that the changes still need to be made. Um, and you know, if we go up, we're going to League One, which is full of unbelievable teams. So is it the difference between League One and League Two is massive. You know, you look at the top of that table. There's Derby, Peterborough. Bolton, Portsmouth, one of those teams isn't going to go up, so you've got to play them. Some good teams are going to come down from the Championship, so uh, but that's, get, that's getting carried away. So I know I've gone on a tangent there and said let's not go too high, and I've then started talking about League One League One next season promotion. Like We've got to be realistic, but I think the main thing of, about last night is its positivity. It's given us, that's what we asked for. We asked for in the last 11, 10, 11 games of the season, just something positive to talk about. And I think that it doesn't change the end goal that we need to get to the summer. But I think what it does do is it gives us some positivity to talk about on the pod, but just for the fan base in general, because we deserve that, we needed that, and we got that last night. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad you said it there, don't get too high with it, because obviously you've been here before and we have. And I was going to say it myself, like, we've won a game and it was brilliant for the, for the, for the, for the disclaimer, obviously, I'm sure everyone watching this has probably watched or at least seen the highlights, but we were brilliant pretty much from start to finish. Like, even the first half, we were the first half was good, it weren't great, but for the standard that we put in over the past few weeks, I'd say it was it was above above average. But the second half, we looked absolutely brilliant, and I saw a few tweets saying, I absolutely agree, it looked like we had our full full flow of confidence back, and it was just brilliant to watch, really. Like, Bradford really didn't stand a chance if you could. If you could use the term suffocating a team, no, that is what we did because it was just it, it was relentless. But yeah, exactly. You can't get too high with it. I mean, like you said, playoffs is probably a bit unrealistic. But again, you've got eight games left. That's twenty four points. There's teams above you that aren't going to take twenty four points. There's teams above you that might only take you know single digit numbers. So you just obviously never know. But what we do know is is that we had a lot of good performances last night, and we'll talk about some to begin with. Obviously, we'll get to the main guy, you know, the the, the tall guy from Gambia first. But the first guy I wanted to talk to you was the first goal scorer, Maka. Again, another goal to his name. He puts himself one clear. Uh, he was obviously joint top goal scorer of the league last night until his goal, and now he's one clear. As far as I'm aware, obviously, I've I've not really checked the uh, the leagues around him in terms of the upper. But as far as I'm aware, he's still the top goalscorer in the NFL. I could be wrong, but I'm, I believe that is the case. And again, look, a goal's a goal. And to be fair, in recent times, he's, he's obviously, uh, no speculation, but you, you, you'd go as far as saying confidence was lacking a bit with Maka in terms of like the goals drying up. So to get a goal last night was important. And I just want to get your uh, overall thoughts on the uh, on his performance. Yeah, mate, he was due a goal, wasn't he? He was due, he's due a goal. He, he's never really had a run like, like that before for us, where he's gone so many games without a goal and probably gone so many games. I would say without looking like without scoring, I think that's unfair. He's got in the right positions, but you know he's been going clean through, and you've kind of thought a bit on, different with Maka. Normally, if he goes clean through on goal, you think he's burying this, but in recent weeks, he kind of had a little bit of doubt about him. I think um, not doubting his abilities, but just his confidence and the run of form he's in. But he put those to bed. He he got a goal. He needed that goal. 
probably more than anyone. Um, and I think Stuart Maynard kind of put it best. You know, he said that he, he's a, a striker that's willing to miss chances. And I think that's always the encouraging thing. Even though it's upsetting seeing, you know, that some of the missed chances and you, you, you do start to think, oh, is his confidence on, on the way? And is it, you know, is he, is he, has he lost his goal scoring touch? Those thoughts creep in your mind. If he's getting in the right positions, the goals will follow. I mean, I think he, you know, he missed another chance in, in the game and he could have had two. But those, if he keeps getting those chances, getting those positions, he will score. Last night, he was in the right place at the right time. He couldn't miss and he didn't. So... I'm confident that he'll go on another run now. He's the type of player that gets goal-scoring runs as well. And I'm just delighted for him. Delighted for him because, like I say, I think he needed that goal. He's top scorer again, clear, like we say. And look, you don't score that many goals by fluke. Like The guy is a machine, isn't he? Um, and I think that um, at, you know any doubts that were over him have kind of been put to bed because uh, he, he got that goal last night. So I couldn't be any more delighted for him, to be honest. Absolutely, and look, you are spot on. I mean, if there's anyone now you'd back to go on a goal scoring run, it'd be Mark. Because even in games where you know he hasn't scored, I mean, the next game you're always back into score because he is that kind of player who pops up in the right place and the right time. And for full disclaimer, I mean, obviously, if you're going to bet, bet responsibly, but my dad always has a fiver on Mark to get a hat trick because you just never know with Mark. Right, every every single game without fairly will win. To be fair, it's, it, I mean, he has got one this season, so. Uh, one or two, actually, I can't remember. But, yeah, it's returned him. He's he's definitely in profit still, which is obviously good. But, yeah, again, if you're going to bet, do it responsibly. And, obviously, we spoke there about Mako and how he's continuing to add to his, I mean, very high tally. So, it's only right we do the same for Jody. Another assist, arguably two, but definitely one that he can't be denied of. And, to be fair... Again, another performance from him last night where you just look at him and you think, my word, if you keep hold of this player next season, you'll be all right. And, yeah, I feel like we'll struggle because, I mean, look at him. He's absolutely incredible. Some of the things he was doing on the football pitch last night were absolutely incredible. And it's, he looked like the Jody of old. I'm not saying he was playing poorly recently, but I think the whole team struggled with confidence. And when it came back last night, he definitely put on a show, no pun intended. So, again, a penny for your thoughts on that. Yeah, the guy is a joke, mate. The guy is just an unbelievable footballer. Um, I mean, firstly, obviously, he hasn't been called up for Malta. I know we spoke about that, so there must be something going on, whether that's... Uh, but he's still allowed to play for us, so, you know, there's something there. But the fact that he's still putting in the top performances like he is, you know, it's not letting him... It's not affecting his performances, and that's just a testament to his ability and a testament to him as a guy as well. Um, I mean, the, my first thought when that... That goal was scored was that tweet he put out when we signed Jatty. You know he said about him being six foot four, and he he put that um that like that video of the you know the we've all seen it. You know um it's brilliant. And if you haven't um he tweeted about it last night, so go and check it out. But it, it was true, and it, it came it came true. He predicted it. He he knew put those quality balls into an area where we've got a six foot four, six foot five forward who who wants to score goals. They're never going to talk about him, but that ball in was unbelievable the quality um it's just you can't defend those crosses and when you've got a player that's in the thing is i don't think he can even call it form anymore like because he's coming across a whole season like you've just, you just got a player that's that good who's got a delivery like his delivery is second to none in this division it's some of the best delivery in the in the whole country he's starting to get it's a bit worrying to be honest he's starting to get um plaudits from everywhere now everyone seems to be talking about him uh, across all the leagues, it's like Jody Jones, Jody, and it's a bit worrying. Like I'd quite like to keep it a little bit more quiet. So he's uh, so he's definitely ours next season. But no, in all seriousness, seriousness, I'm just delighted for him. No one deserves it more than Jody. He's been through so much, and uh, what a player, mate! What a player. I struggle to recall anyone that's had some this form of impact on lots for that, for a long while. You could talk about your Rodriguez and everything that he did in that ten role, but if you talk about like almost the uh, importance of having someone like Jody a wing back in the way that we play, I feel like he he overshadows any sort of impact anyone else has had in recent times. But obviously, that assist came for a certain six foot four Gambian forward up front, so I guess it's only right we we uh, flow this into a, a nice conversation about him. I mean. Look, 125k price tag at the start when we obviously when we signed him and 
his first couple of cameos probably weren't the most promising for that price tag, but you'd say after the last four days, you know, three goals, one assist, and two convincing displays as well, especially last night. He was pretty much unplayable. I don't think there's a single Bradford defender that fancied going near him because he just, honestly, he probably just ended up with them on the floor. You know, he might like... And this is what we needed. We needed something different. He definitely offers that. He offers a duck sort of nasty side. And it, 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 it leads to so much unpredictability about us now because, I mean, Maka's goal, take that for example, he's completely free at the back post. Who leaves Maka completely free at the back post? But that's because you have to worry about Jatta now. And it, that's what I mean. It, it's helping us in more ways than one. You've got to look at the bigger picture. But, I mean, the picture that he's painted last night was an absolutely dominant display and he's got two goals to show for it. And again, I would love to get your thoughts on that man. Yeah, I think you've hit the nail on the head with like the Maca thing. You know, he ties defenders up, and we had it last season with Rodriguez. You know, he he would like teams at the start of the season were kind of marking Ruben out of games, and then it left Maca to free. And then when people realised we need to mark Maca, then Ruben was free. When we're getting, we're going to get that again with Jatta now. You know, um, there's no coincidence he scored three and got an assist. You know, this guy is he, he's not a selfish striker as well, which is brilliant because he got that assist. But it's the way he plays. I love it. I love the fact that he tries to spin in behind. He's got pace, he's got power. Like you say, when he's on it, which he's been the last few games, he's unplayable. You, you can't stop a guy that, that's that size, with that much power, that much acceleration. Um, and he's got a willingness, an, you know, an unwavering willingness to just get him, to keep going, keep getting in behind. We saw it with the ball from Bostock um, on uh, the, against Ackington. And then we saw Ashby Hammond, who has got that in the locker, you know, probably bet more than any other keeper that we've got or seen for a while, you know, you can you can say what you want about Ashley Hammond, but one thing he has got is an unbelievable range of passing. And um, the distance he can get on those long balls is unbelievable. And when you've got a player who is not only a great target, but he can also spin in behind and, and get clear, it's no surprise that, that, that he scored the goals that he did. Um, so, yeah, you can't speak highly enough of Jatta. He's looking like an unbelievable bit of business. Of course, again, not get, not to get too carried away. It's only two games, but you can only be positive about this guy. You know, he's he's already given us a different option, different dimension. He's finished his chances. It was a really good finish. It was composed. The header was typical. That header was the kind of header we concede where someone wants it more than you, and he wanted it more than the Bradford defence, and he battered that ball into the back of the net. So this guy, so excited about Jatta. He's... Um, He's been excellent so far. What, what do you reckon to him? And I know you were pretty impressed with him, I think. Look, I, I enjoyed watching his performance last night. I, I was saying, I actually said it to my dad, like, because I, I thought we were going to go down the route of taking a forward off to bring on that Schmidt to to short on the to short the bodies. And I said to I said to my dad, if it was down to me, I'd take Macca off just because I feel like if you can play a ball over the top, Jatta's going to give you that run that will almost ensure that you can hold the ball up further up the pitch. And obviously, we didn't take either of them off in the end. But what did happen was the running behind from Jatta for his third goal. And I just said, I said to my dad after the goal, that's exactly what I meant. Like, it just proved my point completely. But I think, obviously, again, you said it there, it's, it's only two games. It is only two games. You can, like, like we can't get carried away, uh, carried away with just one win and we can't get carried away with two, wins, uh, two games for Jatta. But, I mean... He's not. He's not scoring goals for fluke. He's scoring goals. He's, he's clearly a capable forward, and I feel like in this division, for example, I mean, he came from the Danish top division, and I can't imagine there's too many players that have made this move. And I feel like you, you, you although it's not really a league that gets too much publicity and too much sort of like in the public eye, it, it's not a bad. It's not a bad. Division of football, it's not a bad quality. So, obviously, it was always going to take time for him to settle in and gel. And I still think now he's even trying to understand. Like he looked, he looked a bit confused when Maynard was pushing him over to do the fist pump. So it's obviously it's gonna, it's still going to take time. It's new, it's a new country, a new setup. But if you, he, he, he could be a lot worse off. It could be, he, he could have got limited minutes and had no goals or anything to show for it. So the fact that he's getting a full night last night, scoring twice. You know, starting the game on Saturday, assisting and scoring as well. I mean, you have to be confident that this guy's the real deal. And I'd expect him to start the weekend. I, I wouldn't change the team at all. I think even 
prime example right now, you can't coach, you can't really coach Yasser because, okay, you could coach for a big guy, but what you can't coach for is a, is the pace in behind. You can't coach for the strength. And I just feel like it's not going to be predictable for us because we played one game sort of with this setup and we dominated. So I don't know how people, I don't know how in the space of now when Friday, Saturday, that Salford are going to prepare for it, but let's hope they don't and we, we have another win to talk about. But I have a question for you now, actually, funnily enough, because obviously Jasta looks like he's going to hit four, Mac is continuing to score, and then obviously, you know, in a few weeks' time, you know, in while well, they said the next fortnight, they're hoping to get Kedwin back. So and that's three strikers that you're, yeah, I mean, yeah, if you like your ammunition. And how do you how do you get Kedwin back into the setup? Obviously, I, I'd imagine he's going to start on the bench. But again, you know, you you ease him back in, and eventually he's ready to start. How would you go about starting these three players? No, I think it's a great point. And what what I really like about it is before the Ackington game, you looked at the team, and like it kind of picked itself because we had no options. We had no options in defence. We had no options in midfield, uh, and we had no options up front. We've now gone from that to then one game later we had. Loads of options in midfield because Bostock's back. We didn't know if he was back before Ackington. With um, Bostock is back. Obviously, you've got uh, Crowley and Austin and Jim O'Brien and Robertson's back from suspension. So you've then got five midfielders for, for three positions. Centre backs the same. Obviously, Baldwin's still suspended. I think if he's got one more game, but you've got Warner back as well from 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 injury. We didn't know we we were getting it. he was going to come back. You've got Brindley back now all of a sudden as well. You've got Cameron. Um, Chickson obviously we think pulled out ill but obviously you've got him as an option um, Macari as well so like all of a sudden you've got loads of options there and then like you mentioned with the forwards we haven't got a forward option at the minute obviously on the bench Sanderson and Luther are on the bench but if we get Kedwin back into that mix you've then got three unbelievable players at forwards for the level um, I mean obviously we, I guess you can't really say about Kedwin yet because he's not had the chance to show it but we all know how good he is and how good he can be um, so yeah, I think that's exactly what you do. You ease him back. Obviously, he's been out for a while. He'll, he'll have limited minutes, but it just gives us another dimension. Again, you know, it gives us more options. Um, and having him on the bench, like, how much more confident would you be on on the bench, looking at Kevin Scott as the man you can bring on? So I just think that it's it's crazy how football can work and how our squad has worked this season. But we've kind of gone from having, you know. No players, and also we forget we've got Diddy to come back as well. You know, like he's been injured. Hopefully, he'll be back for you'd hope. Um, I don't know what the the updates and progress are with Diddy, but again, like even looking to next season, um, yeah, we might don't know what's going to happen with players coming in and out. But you're looking there at Kedwin, looking at Diddy, looking at Jatta, hopefully Macker as well. You never know. You've got an unbelievable strike force there, so it's great that we've had these options and it's kind of crazy we've gone from having no options to all of a sudden, like you say, in a fortnight's time, you're going to be scratching your head thinking, oh, OK, Kedwin's here now, how do we get him in the team? It's, it's a brilliant problem to have. Yeah, it's a, it's a, like you said, it's a brilliant problem to have. But for me, I think now, the Jatta form and obviously the, the the potential to bring Didzi back in and Mac is scoring again, hopefully going on a run now, I think the best thing you can say about it is that there's no need to rush Kedwin. You can ease him back in. Hopefully the form continues for all, obviously, Jatta and Macca and obviously Diddy. Hopefully he comes back in and hits form as well. And then if you Kedwin, you know you can you can get back into the team, probably get 15-minute cameos towards the end of games. But ultimately, you know, you're not at much risk. Obviously, there's always a risk of an injury reoccurring when you come back. But, I mean, you're slimming his chances straight away by reducing his minutes. But, again, it's for the right reasons. So, you can't have too many complaints. And you touched on it there about the midfield options. And we'll, that's, the, that's the next area I want to talk to you about, especially last night. Because, again, Sam Austin, brilliant. I mean, we said the last episode, we'll say it again. The attitude he has towards the club, fantastic. But the two players I want to talk to you about is, obviously... Scott Robertson, because again he's back in. He had a great performance, from free transfer, and I imagine he's he's saved this football club a lot of money uh, in terms of the summer recruitment. Because you're you're almost Matty Palmer partner now is is that man because he is brilliant. And obviously, I want to talk to you about Dan Crowley as well, who again I've criticised quite heavily. But honestly, Dan, if you're watching, you were absolutely incredible last night, and I apologise for everything I said. Mate, what a performance from both, but Crowley especially. I mean, on the ball, brilliant. Carried it a long way on a terrible pitch. And Robertson was there to do the dirty work. So, 
let's hear it. Let's hear your thoughts on them two. Yeah, mate, the ball sticks to Dan Crowley's foot. It's like it's got like, super glue or Velcro on his foot. It's it's unbelievable how how it how it happens. You know, the level of ball control he's got is is, is sensational and. You've got Scott Robertson as well. And like you say, Scott, Scott Robertson's in there to do the dirty work. But what's brilliant about the fact that he can do that dirty work is he's also he's a player as well. Like he's not just there, he's not just a player that's there to break up play, like he can play as well. Um and that's a testament to his ability. It's been a brilliant bit of recruitment and I know the recruitment team gets a lot of has had a lot of criticism and I think rightly so, but they've gotten with Crowley and, and Robertson, they've gotten two players right, massively right there. And again, both on on free transfers, you know, two unbelievable pickups and it shows the recruitment can be done right. It's not necessarily always done right, but it, it can be, and it, it has been with those two especially. And you look, Dan Crowley, we know the level he's capable of. It definitely helps having two players alongside him in Austin and Robertson who are willing to do the hard yards. They're mobile. They've, they've, they, they'll put their foot in. I know that's not necessarily how you describe Sam Austin, but he does everything. He covers every blade of grass. Scott Robertson covers every blade of grass. So it definitely helps Dan Crowley having those players around him. Um, but you can't fault him either. His his work rate was was brilliant as well, and I think that you've got a midfield three there. Who, I mean, I love that midfield three. It's got loads of balance. And then you've got you look at the bench. You've got uh, and the players that can come in. Jim's had a really really good run. He's been you know a leader for a really difficult time. And John Bostock had a good game against Accrington, and, and we know what John Bostock's capable of. Obviously, he's not been his, his best again, best run of form. But hopefully, he can come back with some renewed energy and. Just really positive about, but the the three especially that started and, and played, they they were, yeah, top top draw and um, all three of the the best footballers at this club, I think, uh, up there, right up there. Yeah, hundred percent. And I, I I always felt that when Palmer left the team for injury, I thought Crowley was one of the players that was negatively affected the most in terms of having to drop back to get on the ball. But I feel like. I'm sure many on yourself would agree that when Robertson's in the team, Crowley looks just a, a lot more at ease, can get on the ball more, knowing that there's someone behind him to clean it up. And Robertson is that player. And I feel like he's, like, again, I said it before, I'll say it again, he's probably saved the club a lot of stress, a lot of money, trying to recruit a partner for Matty Palmer because he's already in the building now. And what you have to do is just look after him. And he's obviously on a two-year. And I don't think... I think another good season next year, you'd be struggling to get him to sign a new deal. So I'm not saying offer him a new one straight away, but he'd definitely be somewhat on my radar because I feel like that sort of player, he's definitely looking like he's enjoying himself. A long may it continue. But we start with the forwards, we entered the midfield and now we'll go to the defence because you have to highlight them. You know, it's been a while since a clean sheet and they deserved it last night because all of them are faultless, really. I thought Cameron was brilliant. I thought Warner was excellent. Obviously, Namane and Jody offered us a lot going forward and a lot backwards uh, last night. But there's one man in that back line that I did particularly enjoy his performance. That was Lewis Macari. I feel like with Lewis, you know, you, you kind of, on a pitch like that, you kind of expect him to embrace it because he, he has no problem doing the dirty work. And to be fair, it was a typical Lewis Macari performance. Brave, didn't mind getting on the ball. On on that sort of on on that sort of surface as well, but there was a there was a moment in the second half where I thought Bradford were nailed on to to score. I think it was an equaliser actually, and Macari just last ditch somebody, absolutely fantastic tackle slash block, and that for me was where I was like, wow, this guy's really turned up for us tonight. And obviously, I'd like your thoughts on the whole defensive performance, but especially on Lewis Macari, if you if you will. Yeah, I'm delighted for them. I've said that a lot today, but I, I probably am most pleased for the defense because they they needed that. They, they got a clean sheet, and, and um, and you predicted that. So so kudos to you, man. You, you predicted it, and and I'm really pleased for for them because they they deserve that. And okay, they deserve it on the merit of that performance, and and they've had a lot of criticism. And again, you know, the criticism is warranted. You know, criticism in in football is is there, and it happens, and it is warranted. You know. The performance levels aren't at the standard. Criticism is going to happen, but I'm just really happy for them that, that that they've got through a game and they've got the clean sheet. And you know, like they deserved it at Newport in that game, they didn't get it. This time they've got it, and hope they can build on that because that's a really strong back three that you've mentioned there. Uh, obviously, got Aidan Baldwin to come back in as well. Again, it causes that issue of who comes in. It's a great problem to have. Uh, obviously, Richard Brindley was back involved as well, which is, is great to see. Um, but. But yeah, in terms of Lewis McCarry, again, a similar to Scott Robertson, 
an unbelievable piece of business. Again, the recruitment, um, maybe that's one that's worked out fortunately in terms of we got him on loan and then he was available because he had a short-term contract and he obviously enjoyed the loan and he, he didn't, as soon as he signed on a permanent, he didn't get too many opportunities, but he's starting to, to grasp that now. I think with Lewis, you know exactly what you're going to get. You're going to get at least a seven every single game. He's a solid, consistent performer, a little bit like the Sam Austin of the defence. He can play anywhere across the back line. He can play as a right back, play as a centre back. I bet, I bet he'd put in a shift at left back if you asked him to. He's always performing. His attitude's brilliant. Um, so I think he's a, one of the unsung heroes, but I'm glad that we've, we've been able to give him uh, the praise that he deserves today. Yeah, absolutely. And look, you meant, you've mentioned it a few times now with obviously options coming back and we'll, we'll obviously get to, you know, Stu and his team and what last night will obviously do for them and obviously all the options coming back. But finally, in terms of the on-field stuff, I think you have to highlight uh, Lukas Gammon. Obviously, it's not been easy for him. I mean, if it, when the run was obviously going through that torrid, torrid patch, he was kind of one that was highlighted as... Well, I mean, not necessarily to blame, but when when you know when you lose your place in the squad, it's oh, it's part, it's nine times out of ten, it's it's through not obviously performing well. When obviously he did to Sam, and he was back in last night, probably on short notice as well. Because I can't imagine that you know obviously they find out the day before, but I can't imagine it was it was something that he had in mind or something that he anticipated on Saturday to be starting and keeping a clean sheet on Tuesday night. He did, and not only that, got the assist for I, I believe it was the third goal, the kick over the top to uh, to Jato. And again, I, I mean, I've always thought he was his distribution was good, and especially like last night. I mean, it, it, for the first goal, it came from uh, Ashby Hammond pump forward. So yeah, overall delight for him as well. I'm sure it would do him the world of good with confidence. And if Sam obviously isn't available on on Saturday, even if Sam was available, I think it'd be very harsh to drop Ashby Hammond, especially after. His clean sheet and performance last night, but finally, before we talk about obviously Stu and his team and what it does for them, just a penny for your thoughts on Luca. Yeah, no, I'm glad you mentioned that about the the, the short notice because that's a, an aspect that I guess isn't considered all that often. But psychologically, to get yourself in the right mind frame for that on late notice is not easy. You know, it's not easy. Um, like you say, he's probably in the in the in the frame of mind that he probably isn't going to get too many more chances before the end of the season. And all of a sudden, he's, he's back in the team. Um, you've obviously always got to be ready as, as, a, as a footballer, but but especially as a goalkeeper, it's difficult to think you're going to get a chance off the bench. And So so to, to get himself psychologically ready and then put in a really good performance like he did, he, you know, he deserves a lot of credit for that. I think the one thing you can say about Luke, obviously he's been part of the two two games that we've won under, under Maynard. And I think what is... Is the thing with Luca is at his best. I think he's looked the best goalkeeper when he's played on his best form. I know that's harsh to say because Sam uh, put in the like a ridiculous performance against Crawley, uh, but I'm t- talking in terms of overall confidence. You know, on the ball he's looked in the games where he's played well. On the ball he's looked fantastic. His distribution has been brilliant. He, the one thing he has got over the other goalkeepers is the range. Like I mentioned already, he can ping that ball so far with like little back lift. It's an unbelievable technique. He can generate so much power. Obviously, he did come in for criticism and there's a reason he lost his place. And it's harsh on Sam, who had, like we say, had a really good game against Crawley. Um, kind of has backed it up a little bit. And so it's difficult. It's a dilemma. I'm going to throw it back at you before we move on. Who would you start on on Saturday? Because let's say they're both fit. Obviously, if, if Sam isn't fit, then Lucas stays. But let's say they're both perfectly fit. Who gets the nod for you? Because it's extremely difficult and uh, I'm not sure who I'd go with. I think, like you say, it's probably harsh to, to drop Luca though. Yeah, I, I'd stick with Ashley Hammond. I think it'd be very, 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 very harsh if you didn't. I mean, it's not many times a season or in seasons prior that I can remember a goalkeeper getting an assist for not. And it was someone I didn't notice last night until I got back into the court and I had a look and saw, obviously, who got the assist. But, I mean, and even then, I thought he commanded this area well. I thought he came out and to, to collect a lot of things that Sam probably wouldn't have done. And there's no criticism of Sam. But one thing I don't find particularly pleasing about his game is his inability to claim and dictate his box. And I thought Ashby Hammond did that perfectly yesterday. And there was a lot of trust in him as well. It was very clear to see, you know, especially on a pitch that was bobbly. He got the ball back to him a lot, but that's part of our play. That's part of the way we do it. 
but to do it on that pitch was brave. But again, it, it's probably a testament to not only the trust of the back line in him, but also the confidence because again, short notice, you know, you've been dropped and that normally leads to a bit of disbelief and, you know, almost a lack of belief, if you like. And I mean, he was brilliant last night, so you can't complain with that. And like I mentioned to you there, I mean, that's the on-field stuff complete. We'll talk about the off-field and there's no better way to round off this Bradford segment, if you like, then talking about Stuart Maynard and his team. Because, look, we say it all the time, even through the torrid, you know, winless spell that we wanted this to be successful and we want it to, although we have to come on here and be honest and criticise and, uh, you know, sometimes it might sound like we don't want it to be successful, but we, well, we absolutely do. There's no doubt about that. And last night it was successful and it just showed that I mean, whether it was the fact that he had more options to work with last night and it was it was showing with the result, who knows? But what it did show is that, uh, again, we spoke about it a lot recently, you know, putting in the performance that looks like you want to play for a manager and you certainly cannot say he did not get that last night. And when he did get that, you know, you, we've left 3 no winners. Uh, obviously, a Bradford team that aren't in great form, but there's no doubt that. It's a tough place to go. I mean, the stadium size so says it for itself. When it got going for them last night, they were loud, but it was quickly shut down by the performance. That's a great to do. So again, I mean, your thoughts on that and how do you feel that's going to stand us up in, well, the last eight games of the season? Yeah, no, I'm really happy for Stu. You know, obviously, we've come on here and we, we want it desperately to work. And I, and, I, and I think we saw last night it's starting to. Um, I understand the rumours flying around like, about people and people saying the players that don't look like they want to play for him, I get that because we were in a terrible run and heads drop and 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 people start looking for things. But I think that you look at it last night and the reaction, not just on the pitch, but you know, um, like Jody came out on social media, his tweet, uh, the get in or whatever he put on, you know, he was he was absolutely oh, let's go, he was absolutely delighted. You can tell that I, I don't fully uh, believe that the players don't want to play for him. I think they do. I think the group does want to play for him. I think that the that we saw that last night with the. Almost a release, like of you know tension. Like okay, we've got that win now. We've played, we've have played well. Like we played well against Ackerton first half. We faded last night. We didn't fade, and that was crucial. You know, we've there've been times where we've gone one nil up uh, in games and then not been able to hold on. We always missed a chance to go one nil up. You know, uh, and we've not. Or we've had we've gone one nil up and not then got taken the second chance to go two nil. And that's what we did last night. Killed the game off. Obviously, the third one was was icing on the cake, but. I think there's a lot of credit to him. He he kept things a little, probably a little bit more simple um, in terms of not as many changes of, of shape and things and not as many rotations. And I think that maybe it's, it's walking before we can run and maybe we'll start seeing a bit more fluidity next season. But I, I couldn't be happier for him. I think that he, he did really well last night um, and we're starting to see what, what we could potentially have. Because obviously I know last night's the first win we've had, but Atherton wasn't wasn't bad we didn't come on here and we weren't really negative we were you know relatively happy so let's hope we can we can do that and I know we've got a what you would say I don't want to jinx it but you'd say he's a winnable fixer this weekend so you know hopefully we can we can be talking again about how pleased we are for Stuart next week I like like the uh, walk before you can run uh quote you there because I think it's perfectly perfect for this sort of example because again we weren't doing great but we were almost putting kind of building blocks in place. And obviously we saw that Atkinson and then we came out last night and absolutely dominated the game. And look, again, we said it at the start, we say it again, you can't get carried away. You can't get too high or too low. It's one win after a long spell without one, you know. And But obviously now you, you, you've set yourself up for a nice final eight games. So obviously we have to play Stockport in that time. That is obviously in April, so we've got a bit of time before we get to that. But you said it there. I mean, Salford, you know, not is you wouldn't look at that fixture and think, wow, you know, this is one we'll look at and think, no, we're not getting anything. Especially after we just won three uh, nil yesterday evening, you definitely fancy that. And I think, look, you said it there as well with the rumor mill. Obviously, it, like, it's very easy. It was a very f- easy thing to say, and I said it myself that the players didn't like they want to play for him because I mean there was just times in that spell where. They just didn't look like they want to be on the pitch, and obviously you had you had all sorts going on in that time, and it's it's finally nice now that you know. Well, I mean, I I wasn't awake for long, albeit before we came on to film this, but I did have a scan of social media, and it was a lot of happy 
positive people this morning. It's been a while. It has been a while. And obviously it's nice now to to have been able to put out positive content yesterday and to be coming on here and doing the exact same again. But before we move on to the to the Salford game, I just want to speak to you about the moment at the end. Obviously I tweeted it. The, the video of the uh, obviously the togetherness and the club did as well and I feel like the reason I did that is because I felt it was important and I feel like it would be obviously the reason they did it as well but I felt like it was important especially after all the negativity that we had in, in, in the winless run it was almost important to get sort of that video out to show the to, to, to show the togetherness and I like to do it anyway because obviously you know not everyone can be there and I like to have that sort of like realism and to help people understand what's going on inside the stadium because obviously when, when I know when things end on the I follow, you know, you you, yeah, you don't really, you, I think you just stare at the dugouts with the scoreboard on the screen. You can't really, you can hear it, but you can't see it. So I like to show. And again, look, I think it was it was perfect for us last night in terms of having that moment at the end. I think it was perfect for, especially Stuart Maynard himself, you know, to understand that these fans aren't aren't criticising you for, for no reason. They're criticising you because they're absolutely desperate for you to succeed here and and to have a successful football team to cheer on for the last eight games. And if anything if last night was anything to go by, you'd absolutely say that we, we have the best chance of having that football team in the last eight games. But again, your thoughts on that, because it's been a while, you know, it, we've had a few boos, a few boo moments in it, it it along the way, but last night there was absolutely zero booze and there was there was a lot of happy faces for a change leaving the away end. And again, before we move on, just your thoughts on that? Yeah, let, let's hope that we can do it at, at Meadow Lane, you know, because we've had the great moments away and it's brilliant and I think it's incredible and it's a reward for those fans that are going there regularly, you know, loyalty week in, week out, like yourself, there, no matter what the result is and it is an absolute, you know, reward for your hard work like and, and dedication but let's also hope then that there's been worries about the crowd there's been worried about the the attendances dropping well let's hope we get a performance at home because that togetherness is there it can be um straight away the scenes were brilliant you know and if, if anyone hasn't seen it i encourage you to go and it's on your on your page go and have a watch it's, it's brilliant because you see that togetherness that's what this football club has been about um and unfortunately it's been a bit of division over the last few few months, even. And it's a shame. But I think that if we can get together, have the togetherness, I'm not saying that anything's going to happen this season, you know, like at the top, not get too high. But also, let's not get too low, you know. Let's hope we get a positive result. There's no reason why we can't this weekend. But if we don't, let's also um, remember the, the the moments after that game because the togetherness can help us and and it, it can be positive. And I, I think it was it's just a really nice feeling and atmosphere and it's turned like a little bit slowly you know it hasn't um even after Crawley when we lost I don't think there was too much like negativity and I, it's really nice to see I'm not saying people can't be annoyed and negative after a loss of course everyone is you know I, I hate losing hate hate losing but also love winning and I think last night was a perfect example of that and the scenes were were brilliant to see yeah exactly and I like your point there Obviously, about bringing these celebrations back to Pelé. And like we've touched on, you know, we have the opportunity to do that on Saturday. And I feel like that's a perfect sort of flow into speaking about Saturday. Because, again, two wins on the road and it's zero at home. It'd be very nice for that sort of reception to be replicated at Meadow Lane. It's certainly long overdue. And I have no doubts that it can happen. If we if we want it to happen, it's simple as that. I think I feel like in these last eight games, I don't know about you, but I feel like the only pe that it don't really matter about the opponent. The only the only people that can dictate our sort of fortune is ourselves. Uh, I guess that's the same for any game, really. But you know, if not to turn up, you know, I don't think there's even Stockport. It sounds crazy to say, but if you turn up against Stockport, they are beatable, no matter how good they are, no matter how good they're doing. <laughs> They are beatable, especially at Madeleine. And I feel like you look at the teams that we have still left to play, obviously MK Dons as well. If you if if I'm considering Stockport be, beatable, I'm considering MK Dons beatable. And of course, two good teams and I, again you don't get carried away after one win. Well I said I said it through the for the for the run without a win. I said 
this team, if it turns up, it will beat anyone in this, this division. I absolutely stand by it. But again, it's not MK Dons or Stockport on Saturday. It's Salford. You know, it's a team that are 20th. You know, they could arguably do the points more than us. But we're not here to do the charitable work. We're here to win football matches ourselves. We're not giving away anything for free. And I, well, I mean, I think everyone fully expects to, to back it up. Uh, back up yesterday night against Salford. But let's start by just asking you what you're expecting for that game and do you reckon we'll get that, that back up, if you like? Yeah, I think we will. I think we will. I'm, I'm feeling confident. Um, firstly, on the run, we've got... Yeah, we've got... Like you mentioned MK and you mentioned Stockport. They're the two you look at that are difficult, but they're both at home. So that's positive, you know. They're both home games. Um, even if a home form has been a little bit indifferent, a little bit not as great under under Maynard, we know how good we can be at Meadow Lane. We know how difficult we can make it for teams. So... It's obviously positive to be at home in those tougher games, and I think you look at the eight. You know, you can you can see us getting plenty of points from that run, and and it's about it's not even about points; it's about performance and and, and getting some positivity and something to go into the summer takes into the summer with you know some positivity. And I think I think there's plenty of opportunities to do that, and and, and one of those opportunities, prime opportunity, is against Salford, like you mentioned, the twentieth. They're not out of it yet. You know, they, they, fair enough, they're eleven points above the drop zone, but they have played more games than the teams that are below them. Um, they're in again. They're in a, like mixed form. They they won their last game, um, but before that they've gone on a little bit of a um, negative run. You could say you know before that they lost to MK Dons, lost to Mansfield. Yeah, these are the better teams in the division, but they lost quite heavily. Uh, and these were again, games that they played away as well. They've had quite a lot of home fixtures recently. They've only had two away fixtures in their last seven, and they lost those two to the two that I mentioned. So their run of form hasn't been amazing and they've been playing at home um, and also we saw what we did to them at home you know we dominated them we played them off the park so I think we're a better team than them I think like you say if we turn up we'll, we'll be fine I, I really do think that and I think that I'm feeling quite confident um, it's weird to say that I haven't felt that felt that for a while but this has been the game I've been looking to as the one that I felt could have been the, the game we can use to, to have a little bit of a turning point I was hoping we could get to this point with some positivity and that's exactly what we've got. We've got two back-to-back positive results. Okay, fair enough, Hackington wasn't an amazing result, but it was more positive than what we've been getting used to. Then we've got another even better result against Bradford. So let's hope we can go to against, go to Meadow Lane against Salford and, and back that up with yet another positive result. And I, I genuinely believe that we can. You and me both, mate. And I think, look, obviously Salford have their quality. You know, obviously Matt Smith up, up front. Uh, but again, you know, last night the alarm bells sounded for for, for the the obviously the the potential of playing against Andy Cook, and I thought Cook was terrible. I thought he got marshalled out of the game pretty much faultlessly by our back line, and you know you can have all these big name forwards up front for you, but ultimately it means nothing if you're going to marshal them out of the game. Hopefully we can do that to, again to Smith. Smith's obviously having a a better season than Cook. But again, you know, you know, across across the floor, you'd back our defenders to beat him in a foot race. In the air, you probably got a bit of a problem. But again, it's massive for us to obviously stop crosses going in the box then. And we've spoke about it before. It's it's obviously something that we've struggled with. But I mean last night we, we did pretty well with it and I feel like again there's absolutely no reason why we can't do it again at, at the weekend. You know, you're full of confidence, you should be full of confidence, you know, you you've almost put a rot and there's one thing that is a guarantee is that, that stadium's gonna be up for it. You know, you've come back. You, you, you. I always say it was important. Even I was, I was, you know, referring to it prior to the Bradford game that it was always important to take a win back to Medley. You know, if we'd been beaten last night, it would have been a completely different, you know, sort of feel. But I feel like the more positivity you can spread now between obviously now and Friday evening, Saturday morning, you know, it's going to lead to a better atmosphere. And I feel like that fan base, you know, again, you know what I think of the fan base, you know. What we think of the fan base, really, you know, they, they're going to turn up in their numbers again, absolutely, on Saturday. And look, results go your way on Saturday. And look, you, you may only be four four points outside the playoffs with a game in hand. And again, you know, you don't get carried away. But the facts are the facts. The reality is the reality. And, you know, I think it's more important to pick up, obviously, a win on at the weekend. And I absolutely don't doubt that, that we can. And again, that leads me nicely into the flow of the score prediction. I'll ask you for yours first before we get to mine. But yeah, let's hear it. 
I think I'm going to go for a home win. I'm going to go Notts 3, Salford 1. I think you've hit the nail on the head with Matt Smith. I think he might get a goal or create a goal. I think he's a top forward we do struggle against. But then again, you hit the nail on the head with Andy Cook. He was a, a forward that I was worried about. Didn't see a lot of him. Um, Smith is obviously, I think he's second top goal scorer, just behind Maka. There's a reason for that. He's Again, he's played at a much higher level than this. On his day, he's unplayable because of his size, because of his strength, uh, his heading ability. But we have played really well against Bradford. And I do think that if we play like we did against Bradford, against Salford, we'll have too much quality. Uh, Curtis Tilt is another one centre-back. He's been in a decent run of form. A couple of goals from him. So we've got to watch him at set-pieces. They've looked quite dangerous at set-pieces. But the the big one as well, we haven't mentioned, is Jody Jones is up against his old boss from Oxford, Carl Robinson. Jody's going to be motivated to show him exactly what he missed out on at Oxford. Didn't play him. Didn't fancy him. Loaned him to us and, and, and look what's happened. You know, he's... Jody's gone one way and he's going to keep going that way. So he's got motivation and a point to prove. I think when that man is on that kind of, with a point to prove, you're going to see something special. So I'm feeling confident. Gone for Knots 3, Salford 1. What about yourself, mate? What's your prediction for this? Look, I was going to say, I'm going to say what what was always on my mind. And I, I'm going to say it because if I, if I didn't, I wouldn't be being honest. And, Although it's very it's very optimistic, maybe, but I don't think it is. I think I can see it. I'm going Knox 4, Salford 0. I just feel, I can just, for me, I just, when I feel like I can see it, I'll, I'll say it. And again, I don't mind having, you know, thrown back in my face on, on obviously Sunday's recording if it happens. But I don't think it will. I think we've got a very good chance. And I'll tell you now that Shatter's going to get another brace. Jody's going to get two two assists and, and one goal, and I I, I chuck Mac as a penalty for Macca in there as well. But I'm glad you mentioned Carl Robertson there. Yeah, you know I mean it when I'm saying it so confidently as well. I can see it on your face, but yeah, look, I'm glad you mentioned Carl Robertson because I feel like Jody's going to show him exactly what he missed out on, and I hope that Jody does score because I'd love to see a celebration in front of his face. You know, I don't want to be rude, but his stupid face because I mean you don't fancy the the. The the top assist in the whole EFL. I mean, surely you must feel a bit stupid now. Uh, I doubt you're watching it, Carl Robinson, but if you are, you're a donut, <laughs> politely. So, it's what it is, mate. Um, but yeah, look, you just got to keep going. I mean, Jody's obviously going to have... You, you, you can almost expect him to have the game of his life, if you like, against, especially against this man who didn't didn't even want to know who he was sent him out on loan to the National League. Jody Jones in the National League, by the way, says it all really about Carl Robertson. But look, he might he might obviously Carl Robertson might come and get a win. I doubt it. But obviously, I've just gone forward also. Of course, I doubt it. But I won't be the most. I won't be inspired at all to be playing. I mean, under a Carl Robertson team, obviously they won at the weekend, but it had been a while. But again, we've only just won as well. It's no disrespect to Salford. I'm just not the biggest fan of their manager, especially with how he treated Jody. I mean, you look at this player now and you see him and how much he's flourishing at, at Knox. And you just, if you're an Oxford fan, and I've seen a lot of Oxford fans say it when they've seen tweets by Jody, it's not like Carl Robertson, you've got blood on your hands. Because look, he's brilliant. And I think Jass is going to get a handful of goals again. Uh, obviously, you spoke about Curtis Tilt and. I think they've still got a lot, is it Mariapa and players like that? And you can have whoever you want at the back, but I don't think you can you can set up to play for a man as sometimes he's raw, sometimes he's direct, sometimes he's in behind you, sometimes he's just gonna floor you, you know. It's that's the kind of guy he is, but ultimately he's gonna score goals if you give him the opportunity to, and I feel like he's gonna get another two. I I would never doubt Macker. He'd never write Macker off. I always feel like if you're gonna go for not if you went for a Knots one 0 win, you'd probably put Macker as your goal scorer because it's the safest bet. So yeah, I'm confident, mate. I'm absolutely confident. But we'll just obviously see what happens, like you've touched on. You know, you can never get too high, too low. You've just got to ride the wave and this last eight games has the has the potential to be exciting, but you gotta take one at a time. Next up is Salford at home. So you just obviously have to uh have to hope and, hope and embrace the potential of two wins on the Vaps. But until then, you know, we've got two days now. Hopefully this episode goes down well, as I'm sure it will, because, again, the support, continued support has been amazing. You know, I, I, I always like to shout people out when they say nice things about the, the podcast. But overall, I mean, we always get so many nice comments and so many nice, you know, interactions about the podcast. And it, it obviously goes a long way because... You know, we turn the cameras on and record this knowing that it's going to go down well. 
and it honestly does mean a lot. So obviously, thank you for that. And obviously, I'm sure that Tom is going to add to to what I've just said. Yeah, I just want to say that, you know, I know we've finally got something positive to talk about, but one thing that has been positive throughout is the reaction to the podcast. You know, it has been brilliant. I saw one comment um, saying that they can't wait for the episode tomorrow. That was last night after the win. Um, and that just is music to our ears. You know, it, it like like you've said, we turn the camera on and, and we know that, that it's appreciated and that makes a huge difference, you know, when you've got motivation coming from you guys to, to keep going. So, look, we really appreciate the support if you can. Hit the subscribe button on YouTube. If you're listening on Spotify, hit the follow. If you could leave a rating, that'd be even better. It all helps us get some more ears, more eyes. And just really thankful that you guys are appreciating it and, and hopefully more to come. Absolutely. Absolutely. Look, I mean, if you if you haven't subscribed yet, I, I, I mean we massively urge for you to do so. I mean, if you're looking at the, if you're watching this part of the episode now, and we can see your subscribe button has been clicked. Just click it forwards. I mean, we haven't disappointed yet, and we aren't we aren't willing to do that anytime soon. And we have got uh, a lot of big episodes in the pipeline. Obviously, we're not going to talk about them yet until obviously they're all filmed and recorded. But there is definitely a lot to be excited for. And if I was going to throw any hint towards you about what could be in the horizon, I would just probably think about, you know, maybe that Gambian forward and people that might be involved with him. I don't know, that could just be a suggestion. But that might be a little uh, disclaimer, a little hint, but obviously that that should be filmed uh, next week. So with a bit of luck, we'll have that coming to you. But until then, you know, obviously just keep supporting us, keep supporting the team most importantly, because if you support the team the likelihood is we're gonna keep winning games and you can come back and watch these sort of episodes where we're both smiling. And you know, probably producer Charles will be smiling as well. So keep supporting us. Obviously again we've got not only good things coming up, but well, as far as I'm aware, for as far as when we're uh, aware, we have got obviously things coming uh, from from different companies as well. Uh, you know, podcast related products. So uh, hopefully, um, you know, things things that it sounds mad to say, but that is the reality of it, and that is what's happening. So yeah, pretty crazy, really. But to sign it off, you know what? Actually, I'm going to take the back seat. I'm going to let Tom sign it off this week. Put me on the spot, mate. Um, but yeah, thank you all for watching, guys. It's been brilliant. Uh, really happy. And I think it's what you say. Come on, you pies. <laughs>